Probably you've seen all over the news everyone saying about the black poison, about everything related to sodas, especially to black sodas, are used to drink on every single day in our diet. And the thing is, when you go and see, it's not only in black sodas, it's in every single soda and in every single sugary or in every single sweet drink that we're consuming today and a bunch of different products such as bubble gum or such as candy bars or different things that are sweetened with this special ingredient which is called aspartame. Aspartame is something that it's an artificial sweetener I and mean, it means artificial it's not something it has no calories because it's an artificial sweetener it's a chemical so it has no calories at all because it, it's not made from glucose it's not made from protein or it's not made from any fat so it's something completely artificial it's a chemical and it's a sweetener because it has only the taste of something sweet the thing is that aspartame was related because the who and this news that it came on July 14th of 2023 saying that aspartame was, uh, was a hazard ri and risk assessment results related with cancer. But on what, what they're writing and when you go and see, there, are, there, there have been a lot of reactions of people saying that no, that there's nothing to do without it, that there's a, it's all a scam. It's all sorcery or it's just a quackery and then the WHO has no clue on what they're saying. And I've seen people saying that, you know, look, this is, you need to be 100% afraid. You shouldn't consume this at all. And we're going to see point by point, two things. One, we're going to see what's the thing with the aspartame. And two, we're going to see what's the deal with sodas. Please remember before you leave that there is a very, very good way in, in which you can support us. And it's very easy. It's just by clicking the like, button. Why? Because it's going to help us so YouTube makes a better algorithm and more people can find these videos. And we're really making a big effort to create a big community. So thank you for doing that. And also remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so and to hit the bell so we can tell you every single time that we make a new video and you're going to be the first one to be notified. So the thing is when you go and check on the WHO website, it says two things. One, that the established acceptable daily intake for aspartame is a 40 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So if I'm 80 kilograms, I could consume some, something around 3,200 milligrams allowed per day. And you go and say, okay, how much is that? Well, that's probably a, a can of Diet Coke could have somewhere around 300 milligrams of aspartame. And you could go, oh, that's 10 cans. I'm not, I'm not going to drink that any, any time. Well, I know a lot of people who drink that. And there's also another thing. Think of this. You could burn a bread by putting the bread on the oven and putting, I don't know, 800 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Or you could put it on 50 and just do it slowly, slowly. It could take a while. It could take a couple months but it's going to eventually burn exactly the same. There is a process in the body called glycation. Glycation works exactly the same way. It works in a way in which you are, by the high levels of glucose that you have in your body, you're mixing, ma making this process of mixing glucose with proteins in which proteins get glycated, like hemoglobin A1C, and it's a glycation of a protein inside hemoglobin and the hemoglobin which is a protein gets glycated by by glucose and the amount of that relates to the amount of sugar that we have going in our bloodstream and it's one of the ways that we can diagnose diabetes so it's the same thing you can get glycated very fast and you can glycate a lot of organs in your body or you can glycate yourself in a very slow pace but again you can get the poison out of consuming a large amount in one day or small amounts every single day because we're not taking into account a very long amount of time and we don't have enough data. Number two of the people that say that this is complete quackery say that when you go and see, they are making this a part of the of a classification which the WHO has, which is the International Agency for Research on Cancer. And they have like a group of things that they would go from group one to group three. Group one when you, is things that are carcinogenic to humans. So when you go and see it's tobacco smoking, 
uh, solar radiation, the consumption of alcoholic beverages, and ionizing radiation. Group two, 2A, they go and say that there is uh, things like red meat or having a night shift work. And you might say, what? Yeah, well, it could. This is part of group B, 2B, which is gasoline engine exhaust or occupational exposure as a hairdresser or a barber or things like lead. But the thing is, by this being in group 2B, it doesn't mean anything at all. If someone is in group A or in group 2A, for instance, red meat doesn't cause cancer and it's been completely shown. And the WHO is still saying the same thing. Because if something is on a group of the classification of the WHO, it doesn't mean that it really causes cancer by itself. And number two, by the fact that it's not in here, it doesn't mean that, that it doesn't cause cancer by itself. So, but it's, it's not that this is complete quackery. Because again, do you know how many studies show that tobacco actually produces cancer? How many clinical trials are on showing a direct causation of tobacco in producing cancers in humans? Think of a number, any number. Have you picked it up? Okay, zero, or none. Hey. What do you mean? Go and look, check, none. Why? Because it's not ethical. We cannot take for a hundred humans or for a thousand and check and split it into two and go, you're going to smoke or you're, or you're going to smoke and you're going to take placebo or whatever. I'm going to check if in 10 years, how many of you have cancer? We only know by, by observation studies. We only know by the chemical compounds inside of tobacco and the damages that they cause. Huh. But it's interesting. Chemicals inside tobacco, when you ingest them through the years, can be hazardous for the body. But this chemical, which is a sweetener, cannot. And this is being very short of mind because we know for sure that there are other things like yellow number five, which is called tartrazine or in different colorants or different flavors or in different chemical compounds that we have in food, pesticides that we apply in food. We know for sure that they, are can, that they can actually produce cancer on human cells. On 2022, there was a study that came up on, uh, I think it was from on, on March from France in which they related after observing a lot of patients through a lot of years in all of France showing that the people that had a high consumption of aspartame, sucralose, acesulfame, this, all these artificial sweeteners, they had a higher relationship with the development of cancer. Relationship, again. But when we go deeper, let's go and see what's inside sodas that could be of concern for people for developing cancer or for developing different kinds of diseases. Most of them have a lot of refined sugar or they have high fructose corn syrup. And there are two things that we need to be concerned in here. Sugar and, and fructose, which is, I mean, sugar, it's a, it's a mix of glucose and fructose, but the excess of glucose and the excess of fructose in the body for sure can produce high levels of glucose, but high levels of inflammation and high levels of insulin. Number two, some of them don't have sugar or high fructose corn syrup, but they have aspartame or acesulfame or any other, or sucralose, which are artificial sweeteners. Again, there is no clinical trial showing a causation, but there are trials showing correlation. Think of this for just a second. What happens if you say that you're giving soda to your dog or to your bird or to your cat? Or what, what happens if you find me pouring soda on my plants? Then I go like, hey, Carlos, are you crazy or what? Go, what? What's going on? You're going to kill them. Go, Why? What's in there? Well, what's wrong? Well, you're gonna kill them. That thing is not made for plants. That thing is not made for dogs. Why? Because it has chemicals. Because it has a lot of sugar. You can kill the plant and like, huh, hmm, interesting. It happens to dogs and it happens to the plants, but it doesn't happen to the human body because it's complete quackery. Because you are waiting still for a clinical trial to come and show you that. Let's go with number three, artificial colorants. The Caramel color inside the most popular soda in the world, the one that pops up happiness. It's been related and it's been criticized by a lot of people and, and a lot of claims have come to the FDA in the, in the United States coming 
of the relationship of the caramel color with different conditions such as cancers and such as autoimmune disease plus a bunch of intestinal problems. And the other thing is the artificial flavors. So we have artificial sweetener, artificial color, and artificial flavor to whatever the flavor is. Grapefruit, cherries, berries, whatever. All those artificial flavors are chemicals that our body is not designed to be in contact with that. And then the, there are other things that, again, they don't have uh, clinical trials showing that they actually do, but there is something that they can produce and there is something in, in sodas called phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid has the capacity of making the levels of calcium that you're pouring in your urine higher. And if you pour a lot of calcium in your urine every single day because you're consuming sodas all the time, that could have the possibility that you're going to mm, get calcium from your bones, which is the biggest reservoir that you have in your body, to put it back into your bloodstream so you can have levels that are equal uh, after the ones that you're eliminating for urine. This could lead to a lower density of calcium in your bones and this is something that again it doesn't have a lot of evidence but it's one of the things that brings a lot of concern if you think that you want to share this information with someone remember that the best way that you can support us is just by clicking here the like button please remember to subscribe to to the channel here down in the red button and before you leave hit the bell so every time that we make new videos you're going to be the first one to be notified thank you until next time